Adam Kovacevic, former head of Google policy team who previously worked for Democrats on the Hill, just launched Chamber of Progress, <laughs> a new center-left tech coalition that will advocate policies the mm. industry supports as regulatory scrutiny intensifies. Mm, interesting. Joining us now to discuss, editor-in-chief of The Real News and host of Working People podcast, Maximilian Alvarez, and culture editor at The Federalist, Emily Jasinski. Max, let me start with you. Uh, you're, you're a progressive. Are you happy to see uh, this uh, this chamber of progressivism <laughs> backed by several um, tech companies, all largely as an effort in order to guide the new regulatory scrutiny amongst the Democratic Party. I mean, you just love to see it, right? It's a victory for your movement. You know me, Sagar. I love to see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what does progress mean? What does progressive mean anymore? Nothing. I guess I'm, I'm just Literally my head nothing. is spinning. Clearly, right? I mean, you had uh, what was it? Dave Clark, the 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 Amazon d bag, uh -huh. who was saying that um, <laughs> you know that, yeah. that we're the Bernie Sanders of Amazon is the Bernie right. Sanders of companies. We're so progressive, right? You have you know this thing, this industry led thing, calling itself kind of yeah, like the the progressive. I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's a failure on our part. Maybe it's a failure on the left to kind of leave the definition of progressive so wishy-washy that it could be so easily co-opted. But I'm not going to punch down. I'm going to punch up and I'm going to say, like, this is a vicious kind mm. of attempt to co-opt something that is fundamentally good and repackage it and repurpose it for the purposes of making more profit and gaining more power. Like, the thing that I see with this is what I saw with that stupid movie, uh, The Social Dilemma, right? Yes. You had a bunch of people from Silicon Valley... 10 years too late confessing that like you know like basically trying to absolve themselves of their sins uh the sins that have made them so much money and that have given them so much power with these tech companies and now they want to apologize for it they want to be forgiven for it but they don't actually want to do anything to address the fundamental problems that are hurting people and the planet that is what is going to happen here like the partners i have i wrote it down on a sticky note it's amazon <laughs> google facebook doordash yeah. And they want to create progressive workforce. You people are the ones who are ruining the workforce. Yeah, amazing. Um, Emily, what are your thoughts here? Because I guess the other thing I would say to add to Max's point is like, in part, they're able to co-opt this word progressive because it's worked in the past to just use the language of the left as window dressing or use, you know, just representation only politics as window dressing throw up a Black Lives Matter hashtag or put it on the front of your website and be like, of course we're progressive. Look at us. We're incredibly progressive. It's actually sadly kind of worked in a lot of ways. No, this is an incredibly important point. And Sagar and I have had longer conversations mm -hmm. about this in different venues is that the word progressive, part of the reason it's been diluted to the point where it's difficult to actually discern what people mean in various uh, employments of the word is because they actually like there's this huge schism between economic progressivism and cultural progressivism and cultural progressivism has been entirely co-opted by neoliberals. Right. Mm -hmm. So and Glenn Greenwald makes this amazing point about how they're now using identity politics as a shield to protect protect and grow their own power. And that's something that they do all of the time. And that's exactly, exactly what this is. They are co-opting the aesthetics of cultural progressivism yep. and the ideas of cultural progressivism as a way to sort of shield what they're doing on an economic level to sort of, because they know it works, right? Because they get rewarded for it by people in the corridors of power because they sort of like, it's this opportunity. There's such incentive to do this like virtue, the, the cultural leftist kind of virtual si virtue signaling. Yes. Um, um, and you get rewarded for it. And so the more you can do it and the more effectively you can do it, the more rewards you get. And so that's why you have all of these companies being corporate partners for something called the Chamber of Progress. And I uh. sent this to somebody as soon as I saw it yesterday. And they were like, wait, so it's the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, it literally is. Yeah, no, it, they, it's, congrats, point, yeah. it's great, the Chamber of Commerce. And Max, to that point, this Chamber of Progress emerges at the exact same time that the Chamber of Commerce, for the first time in modern American history, is outwardly working with the Democratic Party. And I just, like, you see a lot, not only the co opted as Emily said, this works. Actually, the chamber was able to get many of the people it was back elected and put significant money behind that. It's been a seismic change in American politics and very vastly undercovered outside of this show. Yeah, it's the it's the progress industrial complex at yeah. work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's. Um, 
again, I, 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 I very much appreciate yeah, the coverage that, that you all do on the show. And, and I've been thinking a lot about it myself, right, to kind of try to see where all this is going. Right. Because um, as I've admitted freely on this show, I'm not an economist. I'm just a guy mm-hmm. with a with a loud mouth and, and a lot of opinions. Right. But, um, you know, it's it, there, there's something strikingly similar to me in like what we saw unfold with climate change and the gas and oil companies, right? Is like they they knew what was coming on the horizon and what they were going to do was try to suck as much uh, profit, as many resources uh, as they possibly could um, with the kind of business model that they had until it was, you know, they were able to, you know, jump on the bandwagon of like green energy and stuff like that. So they're basically able to double dip and control the narrative, control the market to the point that they are the ones who are profiting either way. That's kind of what I see happening here, right? I mean, like these companies uh, and the people in the government who, you know, like are are working closely with them, um, they see the writing on the wall. And what they want to do is ensure that the problems that they have in fact helped to create are going to be quote unquote solved in a business friendly way by business they mean themselves right and, and that's that's kind of what i see you know mm-hmm. unfolding right here yeah so emily on the uh co-optation of the word progressive it's really interesting because even back when hillary clinton was running in 2016 she was very uncomfortable label labeling herself a progressive Remember, she had to, like, admit she was like, I'm a progressive who likes to get things get done. Things you know, she done. couldn't just say, I'm a progressive. And yeah. so is it, I'm going to take kind of the counter take, is it actually a sign of progress for the left that so many people feel now like there's a positive association with this word and that even though they want to use the window dressing and, as you put it, the aesthetic of the left to sort of hide the real ugly, like deeply regressive things that they're doing, the very fact that they think it's a PR win to adopt the look and appearance and the sound of the left, does that mean that sort of the public has shifted and represents some sort of perverse progress? I think, again, you have to sort of diverse the culture. You have to sort of divorce the cultural and economic goals of the left to understand that. So I would say absolutely not. Maybe I have too generous of an understanding of the left these days. But I think, you know, the authentic leftist, this is absolutely not a victory for them because these identity politics, um, I guess, shields are actually being used to distract from the problems that exist for workers, the immediate problems that exist for the working class and ways that affect their everyday lives. And because the, the sort of elite class is mired in these like totally esoteric conversations about identity politics, they're able to distract, these major mm-hmm. corporations are able to distract from the issues that leftists, I know, like you, you know, Crystal, obviously yeah. someone who highlights this all the time, genuinely care about and that genuinely do affect workers. Not a victory for the left in that sense. If you do, however, believe that this sort of identity politics ideology is central to leftism, absolutely, this is a huge victory. It shows that basically the, the total monopolization of the culture because now people have a difficult time in the public arena disagreeing with um, most tenets of progressive dogma without coming under fire, you know, Glenn Greenwald, whoever it is. So if, if that's your goal, then yes, huge victory. But if your goal is actually to like be an advocate for uh, against the, the people in power who are mistreating the people without power, no, this is not a victory at all. Yeah. It's just, again, it's enhancing the power yeah. of the already powerful people. I, I agree. But I guess what I'm saying, Max, is they didn't even used to feel like they needed to have a fig leaf you know like they used to not even feel like they needed to pretend like they agreed with us or were on the left i mean they didn't used to feel like they needed to send down a tweet saying we treat our workers great and we pay them 15 dollars and it's amazing and it's even more progressive than bernie sanders is that an improvement I guess, like, in the grand scheme of things, yes, right? Because, you know, like, recently, what was it? We, we were just at the kind of anniversary of the Iraq war, right? And I promise I, I have a connection here, right? Because <laughs> when, when we were um, talking about the Iraq war, like, a week or two ago, a lot of people were saying, like, you know, oh, a, everyone opposed it. Like, it was, it was so obvious how bad this war was. Yeah. 
I, I, as I've admitted, you know, many, many times, I grew up very Catholic, very conservative in Orange County. I bought into it completely, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it took years for me to kind of unlearn a lot of the cultural and ideological air conditioning that I grew up with. But I'm not going to sit here and pretend that, you know, I knew that, that, you know, what was going on with the narrative about the Iraq war. More importantly, I did not feel at the time like there was a safe landing pad, an ideological landing pad for me outside of kind of these two mainstream kind of options of liberal and conservative, both of whom were kind of overlapping on the question of the Iraq war, more or less. Now there is a, a more of a landing pad. There is a, 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 an option, right? There's an alternative, an ideological alternative for regular working people that uh, is not confined to what you know the, the major parties, the Democrats and the Republicans want us to believe. The very fact that that exists in the uh, cultural lexicon, the fact that it exists in people's minds as a position to take um, when we're talking about the ills that our society faces, in the grand scheme of things, when you compare where we were 20 years ago, yeah, it's a good thing. But mm. the fact that, as Emily said, the people with power are going to have the most ability to guide what that landing pad looks like and what it means is very concerning. And so we have to be very vigilant about defining it for ourselves and defining it against what they want it to be. That's a great point. Well said. Love Thanks, talking guys. to both of you guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm more rising for you after this.